I guess the first question is, what's, what's your assessment of uh, things going on right now? There's a phrase that they use in economics that makes you sound very intelligent called endogenous shocks to the sea, to the, uh, you know, to, that occur, endogenous shocks. It makes you sound quite intelligent. Yeah. But it means we always have surprises. I remember a client said some years ago, well, call me when things are sort of calmed down and are normal. And I said, we won't be talking again uh, because this is the world we live in. Although this was, uh, the invasion was a surprise to everybody. You know, nobody thought he would go this far. We we have a view of the world that everybody's nice and we and we can devote ourselves to Mickey Mouse issues, which we have been doing in the West, but we got this very shock, shocking reminder that, that there is evil, people are evil, people have agendas, people do have territorial demands and they're prepared to act on it while the rest of us have got a little bit soft. So it was a shock. Yes, it was. and. Uh... Oil is at $130 and climbing right now. What, what does this mean for Canadian producers and consumers, do you think? Well, you're gonna pay more for gasoline. There's a starter. I, I have an old pickup truck I, I drive and I noted last week when I gassed, I put more money into my gas tank than I paid for my first car. Now, oh my gosh. I, it wasn't a great first car. Let me start with that. Uh, yeah. But you know, I guess if I had to use a phrase, it would be, what did you expect? What do people expect? I mean, mercifully, you know, as everybody started to disinvest, you know, the, the climate change crew, you know, the, the really worked there. And you, by the way, you can now see who was really behind this and who benefited from this. When everybody was starting to get out of the oils, one of the things I remember from uh, my undergraduate uh, economic days is if you cut the supply and the demand stays the same or goes up, guess what, kids? The price goes up. So I, I did, you know, I, I sound like I'm patting myself on the shoulder, but uh, you know, I did buy a lot of the oil and gas stocks at that period of time, which is presented to the funds that I manage uh, pretty significant gains because what, what do you expect? Now, you're not only dead this cutting of supply uh, or cutting of, of, of uh, investment money going in, people disinvesting, selling these companies, but now you have this shock. And the thing about wars is they... They destroy things. They destroy purchasing power. They 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 drive inflation. They 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 waste people and they waste commodities and they waste everything. It's the most wasteful human endeavor there is. And uh, so all this metals start to go as well. Where you're going to use, you know, steel, copper, nickel, everything. It's all going to be part of the equation. So you've got inflation right across the board, but you have it in that linchpin of our society, energy. Right. Right, and also uh, we've been talking on the program as well, Tom, about uh, Russia being the number one supplier of wheat in the world and Ukraine being the number five supplier of wheat. So yeah. it's not just about oil and gas, although that's a preeminent thing in people's minds right now, but there might be some other things coming down the pipe too, right? Very, very much so, but you know, you can have realignment in commodities too. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, if they can't sell their wheat to us, they're gonna, they got a pretty big customer right in their doorstep in China. So you're going to see realignment of commodities. You're going to see inflation across the board. And I always keep saying any buffoon can start a war or a conflict, but nobody never knows quite know how they're going to end up. Right. Not only it goes for military conflict, but also conflict in, uh, for example, in these sanctions. Now, um, I see our, pr our prime minister very uh, wisely declared an embargo on Russian oil coming into Canada. And that was a courageous step, given the fact we don't import any, import any Russian oil into Canada. Yeah. But uh, at any rate, it looks it kind of looks good on paper, which is really all we spend our time doing. But we are going to see this permeate. And uh, uh, for example, everyone wants to go to electric cars. Well, electric cars new use uh, nickel and lithium. Big, one of the biggest nickel producers, of course, right. is also Russia. So you're, you're, there, we don't know in these sanctions what the ripple effect is going to be. We've got a pretty good idea. It's going to be inflationary big time. Exactly. We're going to continue our discussion with Tom Caldwell. He's the chairman of Caldwell Securities Limited. After this brief break, please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 